So everything that I lead you, this is for you and everybody else, everything that I lead you through is an invitation. Don't get too hung up on how it looks. Um, we're just looking for your body to feel better after the practice than it did walking in. And our first pose will be Sukhasana, easy sitting pose. So you can grab a blanket to sit on or a block, but you don't need one. You can just sit on the floor. And Sukhasana basically means sitting cross-legged on the floor. This is going to be our first seated meditation. So sometimes if this is difficult to sit in with a nice tall spine, you just want to elevate the hips a bit so they're higher than the knees or a little bit higher than the knees. And we'll sit with the heart up over the hips, head over heart. Hands come to rest on the lap, either palms down to ground down or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got a little extra to give today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable for you. And we'll begin with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. Shoulders rise up to the ears on the inhale and drop down on the exhale, relaxing. We'll continue the breath in and out through the nose, returning to a comfortable, natural pace. We'll take a moment here just to arrive. We'll let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And become present to yourself here in this space, here in this moment. And begin to allow sounds into your awareness. Maybe sounds in a distance. like cars passing by or a distant dog barking. Or sounds closer by, like ones within your home, of a pet or roommate shuffling. Allowing all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. Feel the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. weight of your hands on your knees. And just get a general sense of how the whole body feels in this moment. And we'll begin to scan the body from head down towards toes. Checking in for any places of tightness or sensitivity, any restlessness or fidgeting.
I'm just taking note to work into these places that call out for your attention throughout our practice here today. And we'll shift the awareness from Anamaya Kosha, the body, to Pranamaya Kosha, the energetic level. Notice where you're at energetically in this moment. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being exhausted, fatigued, ready to crawl into bed, 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. Turn the attention to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space in between. Shifting the awareness up to Manamaya Kosha, the mind, allowing thoughts and feelings to arise. No need to engage. Just observe these thoughts from a distance. Notice what are the quality of the thoughts today. Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. We'll bring the attention back down to the breath. This time, actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose, if that's available. And we're breathing into the belly. So the belly expands, inflating like a balloon on the inhalation. And exhales, draw belly button towards spine, deflating, zipping in the belly and the ribs. We'll begin with our pranayam, our breathing technique that we've been working with all month. It's called box breath. It's a four-part breath. Inhaling to the count of four, holding the breath for the count of four, exhaling for the count of four and holding the breath for the count of four. And that's one cycle, we'll continue like that. We'll start together uh, and then I'll let you continue the practice on your own. Just first a cleansing breath, in through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold it, two, three, Four. Exhale. Two. Three. Four. Hold it. Two. 
three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold it, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold it, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold it, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold it, two, three, four. Inhale, continuing like this at your own breath's pace, counting up to four on the inhale, holding for the count of four, and exhaling for the count of four, holding for a count of four, and that's a full cycle. Seeing if you can fit in an entire cycle of breath into each count of four. So fully inhaling for that count of four, fully exhaling for the count of four. You can slow the breath down or speed it up as necessary, just working to get all four sides equal like a square. On your next exhale, no rush to get there, just releasing this pranayama, this breathing technique. We're turning to a natural pace, like I said, no rush to get there. We'll just meet at a normal pace breath. And hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. No space between the fingers and the thumbs press into the sternum. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. Your reason for showing up to the mat, um, the invitation is just to set it in the positive and present tense. Something like, I flow through life with ease and grace. And we'll seal that intention with the sound of OM. No, uh, or rather, you're invited to, to chant along with me, of course. First, a cleansing breath. <clears throat> OM. your hands to release to your lap, chin drops towards chest, and on inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest, left ear rolls towards left shoulder. Just gently allowing the head to roll side to side. Eyes can even stay closed here. Just bringing movement into the body. Good morning, Sammy Yoga. Hello. The next time the ear, right ear rolls over the right shoulder, hold it there. And the breathing continues. We hold the postures, but not the breath. Right hand comes to land on top of the left side of the head. No need to pull. 
which is the weight of the arm is enough. And left arm reaches away. Slowly the hand reaches down. Fingertips just grazing the floor. I'm actively reaching, creating this nice long angle, giving the neck and trapezius muscle a stretch. You can give yourself a nod here, like not a yes to find where the nicest part of that stretch is in the side of the neck. All nice and gentle, remember we're not pulling with this hand, we're just adding a little bit of weight. Once you find that sweet spot, we'll just take two deep breaths here. Release the hand back down to the lap, chin rolls through chest, and the left hand rolls over towards left shoulder. Still seated up nice and tall. Left hand comes to land on the right side of the head, not pulling, just the weight of the arm is enough. And right arm reaches away, slowly releasing down. Fingertips graze the ground, creating this nice long angle and actively reaching away. And then here you can give your head a little nod, yes. finding all the parts of that side neck that feel stretched from this. And finding your favorite place along that trajectory, we'll hold it here for two deep breaths. Seeing the hands back down to the lap, head rolls down through center, bringing it up to neutral, and let's roll the shoulders forward. Opening up the space between the shoulder blades, the upper back. We'll roll the shoulders back. Opening up the space in the chest the collarbones. And come to stillness in the shoulders and inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, bend over to the right, left arm reaches over. Sweep the arm in front, right arm follows. And continue like this. So it's just like a little bit of free movement here. Ethereal, I love you. My knight in shining armor. <laughs> Exhaling forward. And inhaling to sweep up and over. So we're just waking up the spine here. And we'll change directions. So sweeping over to the left, right arm reaches over. And arms sweep in front. Left arm follows. Waking up the shoulders, hips as well a bit. And the next time the arms are up overhead, we'll meet with arms up. Deep breath in here, reaching through the fingertips. And exhale, twist over to the right. Left hand lands on right knee, right hand lands on the ground behind you, and chest opens towards the side wall. Inhale, back up through center. And exhale, twist left. Following the breath in to rise. And out to twist, like you're wringing out a sponge. In to rise, calibrating breath with movement. Out to twist. And just once more to each side. And back up through center. We'll bend in the elbows. Hands come to ear height. I'm just waving out the hands. Just bringing to warm up the hands and wrists. All the muscles, tendons, and ligaments there. Palms slip down 
uh, parallel to the ground and we just fingers wiggle side to side. So not moving elbows or shoulders, just the hands, a little anti-carpal tunnel action here, kind of undoing all the repetitive movements that we do with our hands all day, often. Palms flip up towards the sky, really reaching back. It's like you're trying to get your fingernails to your forearm. And we're just fully rotating here with the hands completely back. And nice and gently like you're shaking off water, just shake the hands out. Three, two, one. All right, let's extend the legs out in front. Spread, scrunch the toes, roll out the ankles. Change directions, just waking up the lower legs here. Bend in the knees. Become nice and wide. Just drop the knees side to side. Just waking up the hips here. All right. We're gonna come back to seated. Let's bring the right leg in front. So the right foot is in front. Who's my voice? So we're gonna do some deep tissue work here. Make a fist with your left hand, and then we're using these knuckles, the ones underneath the top ones, to work into the bottom of this foot. So I'm rocking forward and back, forward and back pressing into the bottom of this foot from heel all the way up towards the toes. So I'm not really using arm strength here. I'm using the weight of my body to come forward and back, working into the bottom of the foot. It's really just working into any places that you feel any knots or, or tender spots. I want to focus on those areas. I spent a lot of the day on our feet, and they often don't really get that much love. There's tens of thousands of nerve endings here. Really, our feet are still part of our central nervous system. Well, actually, a lot of our back flexibility has to do with our foot health. And of course there's reflexology and all of that, but I'm not, I don't know enough about that to go into all of that, but basically the belief that different parts of your foot connect to different organs and their health. All right, so take your fingers and we're gonna interlace your fingers with your toes. So pinky goes in between pinky toe and the first little toe, <clears throat> so on and so forth. You'll know you did it right because your <clears throat> index finger ends up in between your big toe and your first little toe. And then you want to scooch it in so that the webbing of your fingers is pressed up against the webbing of your toes or as close as you can get. Then the right hand comes underneath the, the um, what is this called? The, underneath your leg to help lift it and we're just gonna roll out the foot. So don't let the fingers slip out. We're just rolling out the ankle with the fingers interlaced with the toes and changing directions. All right, back to center. I'm gonna squeeze the foot as hard as I can. So I'm squeezing the toes with my fingers and then change direction. So I'm squeezing my fingers with my foot. So this should feel really intense. I'm going back and forth. Hand squeezes foot, and then foot squeezes hand. Hola. I said that with as much of a gringa accent as I could. <laughs> so, we're, squeeze we're opening up this space between the metatarsals, opening up 
of space, so you're still breathing even through the intensity of the posture. And then both are going to squeeze tight. So foot squeezing hand, hand squeezing foot, tight, 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 tight. Still breathing, hold it strong for three, two, one. All right, unlace that, take the foot out of it. While we're here, let's grab the outside of the foot, bring the arm around, and then we're going to work towards bringing this foot to the bicep, so to the inner arm. So elbows are holding knee and foot. Alternately, you can be grabbing on the leg, wherever kind of uh, reaches. Yeah. Doing your best to sit up straight. It's okay for this bottom leg to be extended out. So you're gonna come into rock the baby pose, which is just moving side to side. Really mindful of this right hip. That's what we wanna be working into. If you find any sticking points, you can keep breathing and pressing into that a bit more. All right. Let that leg go. You can shake it out. And we're going to change over to the other side. So legs cross once more. This time it's the left leg that's in front. Right hand makes a fist. And once again, we're using these second knuckles. Two. Rock back and forth. Working into the bottoms of your left foot. And heel all the way up towards toes. And then just locating those spots of tenderness or tightness. And actively focusing your efforts in loosen here. <laughs> actively working your uh, those efforts into those spaces. So yoga is a really great place to practice uh, observing and like locating these potential, you know, in other scenarios, problem areas. Um, and then just like giving it some love instead of some criticism. <laughs> there's no report card at the end that tells you how good you are at yoga or not or bad at it or anything like that there's no performance or recital we're just like noticing and just being where you're at making observations without judgment all right so next we interlace fingers and toes Oh, it feels really good. All right, so if that hurts, right? So if just this part hurts for you, um, that's like super normal in the beginning. If you're not used to getting like deep tissue massages or rolling, like doing foam rolling work or anything like that, um, my, myofascial release. But as you get more accustomed to it, the more the better it'll feel. So uh, pinky fingers slips in between pinky toe and the first little toe ring finger on the next and the next and so on and so forth until all your fingers are interlaced with your toes and you know you did it right because your thumb is free but your index finger is between right so your pointer finger is between big toe and first little toe then scooch your hands in so that the webbing of your fingers is up against the webbing of your toes and the left arm reaches underneath and we roll out the ankle. Just resetting if your fingers slip out, then just begin again, instead of just having like one or two fingers holding on. I know this is uh, really uncomfortable in the beginning, often for most, uh, uh, for most people. And then change directions. So if you are suffering at home alone, you're not alone. I'm sure many of the other people um, that are participating right now are the same way. This is something that I learned 15, 16 years ago and never stopped because it made such a difference and my flexibility and also um, my ability to just like stay standing forever like waitress life, bartending life, working on a farm, all of these things, just walking everywhere without a car. Um, 
these exercises really help build up that resiliency. All right, coming to stillness in the foot, we're gonna squeeze the foot with the hand, and then squeeze the hand with the foot. That's the one that usually is like more pain, most painful for people. So we're gonna go back and forth, back and forth, and you can kind of go with your breath. Um, that's how I've always done it, but really the way that works for you, just go in between hand squeezing foot and foot squeezing hand. And it's okay that it's intense. I don't remember. <laughs> Theory, I love you. Sunday, Sunday, Siza, Sunday streams. <laughs> so it's going back and forth, back and forth, and it's okay. It's okay that it's an intensity. It might even be like an eight or a nine for intensity. Um, so we want to push right up against that. Uh, and you just know you've gone too far if it takes your breath away. So we're going to squeeze foot and hand, foot and hand. And this one. So you just keep breathing even through the intensity, even though we're squeezing, even though it's intense for three, two, one. Let it go. Unhook all of those fingers from the toes. Shake out the foot. And we're coming into rock the baby pose. So getting the grip around the foot, around the knee. Remember, you can also grab onto the shin or onto the foot itself. Eventually maybe making, bringing the sole of the foot to the bicep. And then that's like a really nice hold there. Um, so yes, so once you get there, it uh, ironically makes it, maybe not ironically, unexpectedly make it, makes it easier. That's kind of when we're just ro rocking side to side, like rocking a baby. And that bottom leg can be out or in, whatever works best for you. And it's kind of like the, one of the secrets of secrets of yoga. It's like a lot of the like more advanced looking poses are actually easier than the beginner steps leading up to it. Um, yeah, so don't be fooled. You know, once you can hook this foot with the bicep, it basically stays there makes it a lot easier so but all the work that comes up before that is what allows the hip to have the flexibility to even get there so it's all connected all right if you find a nice sticking spot just take a deep breath there just release it back through center extend the leg out shake it out both knees over to the right and we'll make it onto hands and knees for a tabletop pose hands below shoulders <clears throat> knees below hips just gonna bring this over so I can see chat and then inhale belly drops hips and chest rise for cow pose, exhaling through cat pose, chin tucks in towards chest, rounding in the spine. Inhale through cow, hands press down, knees press forward like you're trying to scrunch the mat together. And exhale, cat pose, hands press down and forward, knees press down and back like you're trying to rip your mat apart. Find the breath in for cow, And out for cat. And let the speed of your body be informed by the length of your breath. On your next exhale, let it be your last. We'll release to neutral and bring the right foot in between the hands. It's okay if it takes more than one step. We're just working towards getting the right knee over the right ankle. Left toes tuck under and just wiggle that foot back, back, back until the leg straightens out. I'm pressing back through the heel, 
and come back onto the tiptoes, back through the heel, back to the tiptoes, just giving a little rock back and forth to give the calf a stretch. If you don't feel a stretch in the calf, your knee might be too bent, just straighten it out even more, bringing the back of the knee towards the sky. Right, we'll drop the heel down so the toes are facing the long side of the mat. Left arm sweeps up like a cartwheel to warrior two. Shoulders are up over the hips, right knee over right ankle. This extended back leg, left leg, pressing, pressing into the pinky side edge of the foot. Right arm sweeps up on the inhale, left arm sweeps in front of the body, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle, the arms change. So option one, you can drop the elbow onto the knee and left arm reaches up overhead, extended side angle. Option two, this bottom arm is reaching across. We're just here for half breath. Inhaling, reverse warrior. Exhaling, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extended side angle. Last reverse. And exhale, warrior two. Extend this front leg straight. And we'll tip the hips down. So you can bring the hands onto the hips and we want this right hip to drop down. So this left hip pops up. Like little teapot. We're going to do that a couple times. Just working into this inner groin stretch. Two. One. And then spout reaches across. Let your torso go with it. Reach, reach, reach. This hand releases down to the inner side of the right calf. Pressing the hand into, the, into that calf. Left arm reaches towards the sky. Trikonasana triangle pose. I'm squeezing the muscles of my legs. This, this right knee is really held in place. I'm never pressing down on the knee. I'm pressing into the inside of the calf to leverage this left shoulder open. It's like I'm between two panes of glass. Even if you know that you can reach the ground, we're gonna keep it here instead and engage these oblique muscles. Building strength and flexibility. Got one more breath here. Bend in the right knee, warrior two. Reverse warrior last time. Exhale, cartwheel the arms down to the ground and back to a runner's lunge. Release the left knee gently to the ground and untuck the toes. Here you're gonna press the top of the foot strong into the ground, so strong that the knee lifts up off the mat and gently releases down. Press the foot into the mat, lifting the knee and releasing down. So we're really getting a lot of ankle and footwork in today, uh, but also I want you to be able to feel it on your hips and this quadriceps, this front left thigh. One, and we're holding it here for a full breath. the knee onto the mat. We'll inhale on Janyasana. Arms and shoulders come up over the hips. You can also bring the hands onto the thigh. And that's going to be less weight. So you can feel it. Even if you just bring one arm over, just the weight of the arms up over the hips is going to bring more uh, strain and more stretch into the hips, into this hip flexor. Still impressing this back foot into the ground, not lifting the knee, um, but there is some activation there. One more breath here, my hips are pressing down and forwards. And hands release down to frame the right foot. Left toes tuck under, right leg sweeps back, plank pose. Straight line from the heels to the crown of the head. And inhale, we shift forward onto tiptoes. 
Exhale, chaturanga, lowering halfway down. Option to drop the knees. Then tops of the feet flip, and we press the chest forward. Just like before, the tops of the feet are pressing to the ground so hard, the knees and hips stay lifted. Shoulder blades are squeezing together. It's more like my chest is reaching forward than up. Glutes are squeezed tight to protect the lower back. I just got a breath here in upward facing dog. Then toes tuck under, hips press up high for downward facing dog. Might the head be heavy? Just giving a nod, yes, no. Maybe pedaling out the feet. I'm just here for a breath or two today. Inhale onto tiptoes. Exhale, knees bend deep, 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 gently releasing to the ground with control. Back to our tabletop pose. Then left foot steps up between the hands. It's okay if it takes more than one step. Right toes tuck under, extend the legs straight, knee pressing up and back behind you. And we'll rock it forward and back, forward and back. Stretching out the right calf muscle. Gastrocnemius, it's called. If you don't feel a stretch in your calf, just straighten out the leg even more back of the knee like it's gonna touch the sky. Two, one. Drop the right heel to the mat. Toes are facing the long side of the mat. And I'm gonna turn around so I can still face you. Right arm sweeps up overhead like a cartwheel, or a backwards cartwheel, coming up to warrior two. Left knee over left ankle, shoulders over hips. Inhaling, left arm sweeps up towards the sky, arm crosses the body. Reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Option one, elbow lands on the knee. Right arm reaches over for that nice long angle. Option two, the bottom arms reaching across. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extended side angle. Following the breath, in for reverse. Exhaling, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse. Commit to the bend in that front left knee. I know it's very tempting to straighten it out, but we're building that strength there. And last reverse. Back to warrior two. Extend the left leg straight. Hands come onto the hips and we're working on tilting the right hip up, dropping the left hip down. Neutral, tilt, neutral, tilt couple times like this. So just opening up this mobility of this whole hip area. The next time it's tilted down with the right hip popped up. Left arm reaches out, out, out. Torso goes with it as far as you can go. And that hand releases down, pressing into the inside of the right calf. Left arm, rather right arm towards the sky. So I'm using this bottom arm to leverage the right shoulder back. Strong in the legs. If you're feeling tension in the back of your knee instead of anywhere else, just bring a little bend to it. Not extended side ankle amounts or anything like that. Just like a slight bend. We're working on squeezing the muscles surrounding the knee to protect it during the stretch, but it's going to take a while to build up that endurance most likely. So just got a breath left here in Trikonasana Triangle Pose. And we'll bend in the knee back through warrior two, reverse warrior on the inhale. And exhale, cartwheel the arms down to the ground. Left foot steps back to meet the right. Plank pose, straight line from the heels to the crown of the head. Inhaling, shift forward onto tiptoes. And exhale, chaturanga, lowering down halfway. Always an option to drop the knees here. Tops of the feet flip, chest presses through. Tops of the feet pressing into the ground so hard that the knees and hips stay lifted. Squeeze the glutes. Full breath here in Erdva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. 
and then downward facing dog. Toes tuck under, hips press up high. Fixing the spacing. I always like step my feet in a step or two. Hips are pressing up and back as if they're gonna hit where the back wall meets the ceiling. Head is heavy, eyes open towards between the toes or between the knees. We've got a full breath here. Then we'll walk the hands in towards the feet. In, 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 in. And roll it all the way up to stand. So now we're here up at standing. We're gonna come on to the right toes, right tip toes, and then just bring the knee in, turn to the side. We're gonna bring the knee in, fingers interlace below the knee, and pull the knee in towards the right shoulder. Because you don't wanna find a focal point, a drishti, somewhere for your eyes to lock on. That's not gonna move, so probably me on the screen is not the best choice, but maybe just above or just below, a particular key on your keyboard, something like that is gonna be great. And to pull this knee in, I'm just using bicep strength. I'm not using my shoulders, my shoulders are totally relaxed, they're not even uh, in the picture at all. When it comes to effort, And I'll let the knee come down until the thigh is parallel to the ground. Left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. You can hook under to give a little help. And the right arm sweeps across the body, reaching back behind you. So we're twisting to the right, using the grip of the hand on the knee to leverage the chest even open, open even further rather. So this is just like our Sukta Matsyandrasana, like when we're lying down, it's just like a different, not dimension, but um, a different orientation, like inception. We'll bring it back to center. And then the right hand guides the right knee open. Beautiful. Don't have to turn. I'm just going to turn so you can see what it looks like. That knee's open, and the right, uh, left arm opens up to balance. So I'm squeezing this left glute. Alright, just one little strength thing here. I'm just going to do three rounds. Deep breath in. And exhale, extend the right leg. It's okay if it doesn't go all the way straight, you're just working towards that. And back. Extend. And bend. Extend and bend, bring it back to center and release that leg down. Ah, deep breath in, let it go. Let's bring the left knee in towards the body. Fingers interlace below the knee. Gonna roll out that ankle a bit, just held all that weight. So really working on those stabilizing muscles around the joints. Those aren't really the ones that we can flex and show off or anything like that, but they are the ones that keep us mobile later on into life. So shoulders relax, just using bicep strength here. We'll release the knee, thigh comes parallel to the ground. Right hand to the outside of the left knee. Left arm sweeps open, reaching back behind you. Use the grip of this hand on the knee to leverage the chest open towards the side. Standing balance twist. Still we're breathing. It can feel counterintuitive at first that breathing would actually help you in a balance pose but holding your breath really does not help. <laughs> we'll bring it back to center. 
from the left hand guides the left knee open, right arm comes out to counterbalance. So nice and slow. If you need to reset, go for it. I'm going to change the grip. I forgot to mention that on the other side. So I'm actually grabbing from the outside of the leg. That just kind of helps open up the hip, hip and keep it open. Deep breath in here. Exhale, extend the legs straight. Inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. Inhale to bend. Exhale, straighten. Knee bends, comes back through center. Release the leg, take a deep breath in. Let it go. <sighs> All right, awesome. Let's see. Cool. Actually have exactly, let's do that. So now we're just gonna shake it out. So you can shake out that standing foot. This song just happens to be three minutes long, so for those of you who knows what's coming, <laughs> so I want to start from the beginning to have my timing right. So we're gonna to begin to bounce. So bringing a little hop into it, shoulders rise and drop, rise and drop. So here we are, lymphatic shaking. So you lift your heels up off the ground, let them land with soft knees to create this shape in the whole body. It's giving me a little hot today. Because I thought I would want to do much more of a restorative class, but you know, it's kind of giving me have some energy to just work it out. Work through all those stretches. So we're just letting the shoulders rise and drop, rise and drop. Arms really flop. And just letting the body jiggle and wiggle in any which way. You can start inhaling and exhaling through the mouth as feels good to you. No more need to keep it all in and out through your nose. <sighs> Audible sighs are invited and encouraged. So, why do we shake? We lymphatic shake. Uh, we shake to clear the lymphatic system, which is a system in the body that helps remove toxins and waste products. Uh, and it relies on movement for that to function properly. And shaking like this has been proven to be just the type of motion that's going to help drain that system out. Emotionally as well, if you think about it, you watch like Animal Planet and <laughs> there's those pr the prey animals that almost get eaten up by the lion or the wolf, you know, the rabbit in the forest gets swooped down on by a hawk. But then the hawk misses for whatever reason, or the lion doesn't quite catch the gazelle. What do the animals do after facing death? They shake it off, and then they go back to grazing in the grass and just move on with their lives. And humans too, when we're younger, we tremble in fear, we shake with uncertainty, and the adults in our lives or our caretakers hold us and tell us it's okay. At a certain point in our lives, we go from being the trembling children to being the consoling adults. But there's something about that shaking movement that is healing and helps us actually process the trauma which we've just gone through, no matter how big or how small forgettable. Yoga says we hold that trauma in our bodies as samskara until we physically are able to process and let it go, even if we don't remember what it was. Even if it's the smallest stub in your toe on the playground in third grade. So just got three, two, one, and you come to stillness. <sighs> just feeling that tingly warmth from the practice. All right, and we'll come into our breath of joy. It's a separate practice, but this one's all about letting go. So it's a four part breath. We inhale through the nose, arms rise up. Inhale through the nose, arms sweep out. Inhale through the nose, arms sweep up. 
and a big ha out through the mouth, arms sweep back. So it's in, 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 with no exhale in between, and a big ha out. You have about 10 rounds of this, so you can really get loud with it and take up space um, audibly and in your body, so just be mindful that you're far enough away from the furniture and walls in your house or where you're practicing. Feet come maybe shoulder distance apart. Just soften the knees. In, 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 ha! In, 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 ha! In, 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 ha! In, in, in. Haven't joined in yet, now's your chance. Stable stance, eyes can close. <sighs> Just take a moment here to arrive, to observe, taking your body like a snow globe and giving it a righteous shake. And now we pause to view what was created. Where did that glitter dust settle? what was revealed. And what shows up for you when you allow yourself to take up space, to be loud? And what shows up as resistance keeping you from fully participating? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. And allow your eyes to gently blink open. Might grab a sip of water, a towel, towel off any sweat that might have built up. I ran across a meme that said, um, it was like a fake headline to a, a newspaper and it was called, the title was, Why I Stopped Meditating and Started Screaming. And I could not, I don't know, I just obviously, I thought that was hilarious. And, um, and I was just like, ¿Por qué no los dos? Like, why not both? <laughs> it's like, yes and. think maybe that's not what the yogis meant by balance but modern day that works for me so if you're already on the ground I'll meet you there if not you can come down with me knees at the back of the mat inhale arms sweep up overhead exhale forward fold Inhale to a halfway lift, hands on shins. And exhale, hands come down to the mat, knees bend deep, 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 so deep that you come down to seated. Nice. 
Cool. Feet come to touch, knees splay open. You can grab onto your feet, just a couple of butterfly flaps for Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Just letting your hips know it's okay that you're in this posture. Keep grabbing onto the ankles or the shins. We'll inhale to get nice and tall, so I'm literally pulling my legs in. Uh, not so much to get my heels in as far as possible, um, but more so just to get my shoulders up over my hips. Deep breath in here. And exhale, we forward fold. Belly, chest, head. So I'm trying to bring my heart to my feet. Option here with that grip to press the elbows into the knees. So as I'm pulling in with the hands, I'm pressing down with the knees. Just finding that edge so that it feels like a nice stretch in the hips. Not so much that it takes your breath away and the shoulders stay relaxed away from the ears. So even just relaxing the shoulders away from the ears is going to be even more of a hip opening because the length of your shoulder to elbow doesn't change, right? Just relaxing away is going to help push them down. Might feel okay to let your head hang heavy. The weight can be helpful in this posture. But if you feel any tension in the neck, and like I have for years, so I don't usually let my head hang heavy in any pose except ragdoll, really. Um, so if that's gonna be more of like a uh, like nose past the toes type movement. So I'm just keeping my head a little bit engaged, but I'm not looking up ahead of me because that's gonna bring tension in the opposite direction. You guys know I'm kind of obsessed with neck health and resiliency, so I just want stuff that's going to help you in that right way. And another breath or two here. Exhaling, the belly button pulls in towards the spine, really getting out of the way of this posture. Back up to seated. Extend the legs out. Bring the uh, let's actually drop both knees over to the right, bring it back to tabletop pose, and slide the right knee up to the right hand, cross the foot over towards the long side of the mat. It doesn't matter if it touches, it's just as far as it'll go in that direction. And then slide the left foot back, 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 bringing the left hip towards the ground, I'm trying to keep my hips nice and square the short end of the mat from the ground. Proud pigeon pose, I'm pressing the ground away here. Deep breath in. And exhale, we wave down. Belly, chest, head. Try to come to land on stacked fists. Hands are the ground itself. Who's finding a place for the upper body to rest where you don't feel like you're in a perpetual push-up? We want to be focusing our energy and our effort and our breath into that right hip, leg, glute, muscle. So the rest of the body is just an invitation to let it go, let it rest, releasing any tension that no longer serves you. As we exhale, opportunity to release something else. And Clenching in the jaw, and you're folding in the shoulders. Just get one more deep breath here. And we'll press our hands into the ground, coming up to seated, well, coming back upright rather. Uh, this is so nice, Emma. I have to go, but I'll make it a point to attend a full session. Have a beautiful rest of class. Hippie cactus yoga. Oh, so glad to have you in class. Glad you were able to make it, even for part of it. Um, 
every Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. You're invited, of course, my friend. All right, let's tuck the left toes under, bringing it in a bit, back to tabletop. Extend the right leg back, a couple hip circles. Then left knee slides up towards left hand, wrist, and cross the foot over to the right as if it's going to touch the long side of the mat uh, on the right side. Right foot slides back, 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 bringing the right hip down close to the ground, keeping the hips nice and square. Walk the hands back. So we're mindful not to be sitting on that left hip. Instead, we're keeping the hips square, really keeping that right hip close to the ground. Deep breath in. And exhale, waving down. Belly, chest, head, looking for length in the spine as we release down. Head comes to land on stacked fists, hands, or the ground. One side might be different than the other. Don't get too hung up on symmetry. Often, what is balanced is not symmetrical. Just finding a place for the upper body to rest so that we can focus our breath and attention on that left hip, thigh, glute area. So relaxing any tension in the shoulders and the eyebrow, you know, space between the eyebrows is relaxed. Often we have these grimaces on our faces during yoga class or during solving a problem, if, as it were. Um, the furrowed eyebrows, the whole face is very, very tense. Um, like we're thinking, strong thinking position. But really yoga is just about doing just gonna relax the face. Breathe into the body. One more deep breath here. And press the hands into the ground, bringing yourself back upright. Right toes tuck under. Just bring it back in. Back to tabletop pose. Left leg might extend out behind. Tuck the circles. Knees come down, drop the hips to one side, we'll turn over, hugging the knees in towards the body, let's roll it back, make sure there's no water bottle or cat or anything behind you, so you can come down nice and safe, and hugging the knees in, we just give it a rock side to side, a little lower back massage. We'll let both knees fall over to the right, stacking left hip over right hip, Right hand lands on top of the left knee, and left arm opens up like the letter T. Press this left shoulder to the ground. You might even look over this extended left arm to complete the spinal twist. Supta Matsyandrasana. It's okay if your knees don't touch, if your knees don't touch the ground. There's no, uh, real efforting in this pose once you're in the twist. We just want to use breath and gravity to deepen the posture and we deepen the posture by relaxing. Head comes back up through center, knees come up through center, 
and we'll gently release the knees over to the left. Right, sorry, left hand comes to land on top of the right knee. Right hip stacked over, left hip. Right arms open, palm open to the sky. Gaze can come over that extended right arm. Supta Matsunyasana, supine spinal twist. I'm really pressing this right shoulder down towards the ground. Otherwise, the body is completely relaxed. Just letting breath and gravity do the work. It's really counterintuitive that to get deeper into a posture, relaxation is required. But pigeon pose is a lot of the same, so the posture we were in before this. A lot of that pose is just about letting go and surrendering to it. Bring the head back up through center, bring the knees back up through center, and notice is there any last wiggle or pose that your body's asking for as we prepare or make our final preparations for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. So we'll be laying in stillness or sitting in stillness, if that is your preference, or so we've been practicing. Um, so any last wiggles or movements necessary, I don't know, just feel good, go for it. It's all free movement here, there's really no wrong answers. It doesn't have to have a yoga name or anything like that. Kind of moving intuitively. And as you're ready, We'll make our way into Shavasana, final relaxation pose or corpse pose. Let your legs come down the length of the mat, feet come at least a foot apart. Legs so relaxed that the feet naturally splay open to the sides. Shoulders tucked under, supporting the chest. Arms released down by the sides, palms face open. At least six inches from the body, a symbol of mudra, of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the benefits of your effort here today. Head is neutral, looking up towards the sky or ceiling. And the invitation here is to close the eyes. If that's not comfortable, just a soft gaze, not looking at anything in particular. is also appropriate. If you know that laying flat on your back brings pain to your lower back, you can bend in the knees nice and wide, bring them to the edges of the mat and allow the knees to knock together. Lift and tuck the hips before gently releasing the hips back down with that elongated lumbar spine to, uh, to just give the lower back a little bit more space. So either here in broken bridge pose or extended in Shavasana. Those of you who practice in chairs, uh, seated, just like in our beginning grounding meditation. I was coming up to sit so that I can play some singing bowls for you. Shavasana is all about integration. So, we're taking everything that was gained and learned in class and practiced rather, and integrating it into our bodies in muscle memory, can, uh, thank you, great class. I need to sign off a little early. Namaste, Lar 4444. Always lovely to have you. I'll see you soon, tomorrow or Wednesday. <laughs> All right. So, to come into our Shavasana, we'll start with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. The shoulders can just stay relaxed here.
And just allow the breathing to continue in and out through the nose if that's available. Inviting space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy. And the space between
arches, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet and all of the toes. Relax. Whole body rest. Gently rock side to side. And arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Allow your knees to roll over to whichever side feels natural. Landing in a fetal position. You can rest your head on that bottom arm fully released and fully relaxed, fully supported by the ground below you. Bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, Press your hands into the ground to come up to a seated position, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center in Anjali Mudra. Today we worked on a series of uh, foot and ankle resiliency exercises, as well as leg and hip opening postures. The first namaste said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to the community that held this space. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me today. I hope you found something that serves you. Whether you're down on the ground doing the poses with us, you're just here for the meditations or for the singing bowls, I hope that it's a positive experience in 
in your Sunday. Namaste, Ethereal. Thank you for uh, modding for me. <laughs> I appreciate you. Once again, great class. Your Shavasana was very soothing. Namaste. Namaste, Sam Yoga. Love you. Uh, glad you were able to make it. Yes, with a bit of feedback and a little practice. Uh, hopefully the singing bowls have become... Uh, um, I don't want them to be tolerable. I want them to be quite enjoyable, actually. Uh, but having them translate through technology has become has turned out to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, but hopefully, it's better. Uh, thank you, Biggie One Hundred and Sixty. Uh, uh, thank you, Brigitte. So glad you made it to class. The singing bowl is really nice now. Yes, thank you for that feedback. Awesome. I'm just going down the line. So. On Wednesday, we did the red one. Today, we're doing orange. Tomorrow, will be yellow. I'm just going to make my way down the line. And then uh, from there, we'll take it from there. We'll see how long they're in my custody. Uh, namaste. Hey, the cool sword. Namaste, Ben. Um, so glad. I love having you here. Um, I love having you here in class during the weekends. Um, yeah, I think this has been the nicest one on stream so far. It's like a lower vibration because it's bigger. Um, so instead of being like high pitched, which I think does not translate very well. Lauren, pentacle feelings. Thank you. Namaste, my friend. Great to have you. Uh, what a great group of people. We were all here like in real life. You guys would all get along. <laughs> I don't think any of you guys know each other in real life. That's kind of the cool thing about the internet, huh? Um, so I hope you all have a really beautiful weekend. Um, I'm thinking, oh, so, right, so same time, same place, uh, tomorrow, uh, well, same place on the internet anyway, you can be anywhere, to tune in. Um, Ethereal dropped it before, um, but if you did miss part of class or if you did want a recording of that Shavasana or the whole, you get a recording of the whole class, um, you do get that for five dollar tip. I uh, appreciate all of you who have been tipping this whole time, uh, or every once in a while. It does uh, really help me out. It adds up real quick, to be honest. Um, you know, let's raid the great kind. Oh, somebody asked me the other day what a raid is. Like they were in, they were here, but they didn't know what a raid was. They were like, I don't know what happened. You turned into like a, ma a muscly man, like working out. I don't know why it was, but last week, the only people streaming were all the bodybuilder people that I know. But the great kind is this really awesome chick and she's into uh, research that has to do with breath work and meditation. Um, so she's usually, usually, usually just chatting or, or leading some sort of meditation. So I just like going over and saying hi. Sometimes we learn some stuff, um, some of the science behind affirmations and yoga and all of that in her stream. So a raid just means basically that I'm going to take, uh, instead of streaming my fate like me right now, um, we're going to go and watch her show. Like it's almost like I'm changing channels, like I'm changing your channel for you. Um, so yeah, that's the best way I can kind of explain it. But anyway, I just wanted to say namaste, have a great weekend. Um, I appreciate you guys. You keep me, um, you keep me honest too about, about my, my practice. Cause it'd be really easy not to show up if I didn't know you guys would be waiting on me. So I love you, Ethereal. Cheers, my friend. I'll go over and say hi to the great kind. 